and he's got, again, just around 40 laps to get it done. Well, that's what he has to realize. 40 laps is a long time. Take a deep breath. These guys back here, they have no time as the 40 goes up the racetrack. Couldn't save it. Contact and into the wall they go. Alfredo in the 40 and the 44 of Bassett. Crash just coming out of turn four. That kind of had a long, slow process. That See if we can take a look at how this all started. Three wide is kind of how it got going. You see Ankrum up top trying to hold his position. The 40 just gets into the left rear quarter panel and continues to turn left, trying to avoid him. As he spins out, he catches the 44. And really, I think that's what the 44 is disappointed about. He feels that the 40 didn't have to push the issue, could have allowed the 17 in. Instead, you see, and as you mentioned, slow spin, but it's not slow when they turn right here. This is heavy contact into a concrete barrier. 44 of Bassett was looking at the escape time as possible, but a lot of times it's hardest for the, the leader to be leading, and then second and third have an easier time, although they're not getting that right now. Wow. Oh, there's Dipple trying to get by Jesse Iwuji on the back stretch, and he's oh. going to turn Jesse. Oh, Iwuji is into the inside wall. That's a lot of damage to that car. That is, and that's one of the dangers here is that when you are a lapper and you're not getting out of the way quick enough and you've got to uh, keep up the leader, they're just going to force the issues you see Dipple doing here, and then he just lays in the bumper of Jesuiji and spins him around. And, you know, that's a bit of frustration. I, yeah. I understand it. It's a bit <laughs> early maybe for that, but, you know, we've seen that time and time again at Bristol because it's just very hard to get around these lappers, and you want to lose as little time as possible. And then if they don't get out of the way quick oh. enough, you can get frustrated. Yeah, Ty now Tyler does have a brake pedal on that car, Parker. He does. But, uh, you know, I think that's one of those things where he wanted to send a message to say... Car, Noah Gregson with a new track record. Oh, no, in turn one now, Alfredo, big damage, and another hit to the 30 car of Quinlan. And Cole Rouse is involved in the 99. Several cars spinning and crashing, entering turn one. Those are some really hard hits there, Dave. We'll have to see in the replay what exactly went down, but as you saw, Alfredo went really hard into the wall, and it seems Quinlan was shooting down the racetrack. Cars were trying to avoid him and just ran right through the back of him. And here is another look at it. Oh! Oh, three wide. Yeah, it looks like I don't that know that Quinlan knew that the 40 was the meat in the sandwich. Exactly, and Spencer Davis was all the way down, Ooh. even on the apron. Ooh, hard hit for Quinlan there. Yep, Juan Mon could not slow the five car down and enough. And smashes into the back of the 30 of Quinlan. Another look at it. And this is not uncommon to see here oh, at man. Bristol. I mean, it's, you know, this is what you get. Late race cautions allow all the cars to be bunched up. It allows a lot of outside. He's got the inside line now. Will Dipple give him racing room? He does. And now, the, oh, and he's got it. He's coming oh, up. Loose. Oh, loose. Oh, and no. he's going to spin off of the corner and right in front of the rest oh. of the field. Big contact. Oh, this is not what any of these teams wanted to see. The track blocked. It's a very narrow speedway and nowhere to go. Brandon McReynolds rolls by in the 74, heavily damaged. And there sit, I think, to at least two of the three rev cars are right there. And look at Alfredo's 40. That is destroyed. Get a look at it. Dipple gave him plenty of room on the bottom. Absolutely. He just drove it in really hard. As I said, you know, you're going to try to do that throughout the day, trying to, to force the air car up. But here's where that's the problem, right there. The right front to the left rear that knocks the wheel almost out of his hands. And then Alfredo right there, you know, that's where I would have thought if he could have stayed in the throttle a little bit, he could have drove that car down the inside and left the racetrack open for the cars to go around him. But when he slid up to the top of the racetrack, there was nowhere for any of these cars to go. And Parker, what's the feeling he's getting here fighting for control? Well, at that point, he knows he overdrove the corner. He's trying to hold on to it. He gets him to it once, and then when he hits that tire-to-tire -tire contact, that just knocks the car down. And at that point, you either have to lock it up or drive it down into the inside wall to get away from the other cars. Derek is doing it. I need my car to be able to do this to be able to beat him. Whoa, Spencer Davis right in the Connor Hall. Again, Davis involved, and the caution is out again. This time, it puts Hall in the 31 car in the wall. Road. Here's a good look at it. Yeah, you see, he just, there's room there. Connor left him plenty of room, but he, he tags that apron a little bit, gets loose, maybe has a little bit too much rear brake bias, and that car spins around on Spencer. And it, sure enough, Connor Hall was the uh, unfortunate recipient of that car coming around. I mean, he's loose going in. Yeah, that's that's early. I mean, that's just when you overdrive. That's mm -hmm. simple as, you know, that he just went in there way too hard and didn't have the grip. 
Ferrari throw the block. He's definitely the slower car. Here comes oh! Alfredo. Contact coming through the corner. That again, keep it going after it ramming into him. Let's see what happens down the turn one. Will he hit him again? White flag out. One lap remaining down the back stretch, side by side. Oh, they get into each other again. Big contact from Alfredo, and now Cabri is going to go around. Anthony Alfredo will win at South Boston. Now, next door to us, NASCAR is reviewing this, Parker. They're trying to make sure this wasn't just a, a dump yeah. by Anthony Alfredo. I, I think they'll see that this is clean. I mean, look, I think the four of Chase Cabri, in a lot of ways, was trying to force the 40 into a mistake or pinch him down in some respects because as they come down in here, you see the four turns down early there. I mean, that's... I, I think that's just racing. That's hard racing. That's two drivers that desperately want to win this race, that they're doing everything they can coming down to the last corner to stop each other's progress and become the car coming out on top. Alfredo laps down Haley Deegan on the lead lap. And behind her, Tyler Dipple in the 54, who you remember was... Uh, whoa! Contact! Right there! The 40 of Alfredo moving up the track, and Deegan collects him. What in the world? Dave, I, yeah, I can't believe that. That's, uh, in that situation, that's, I don't even know what to say. But just off of turn two, he's given a room, and then it just looks like he starts inching up Ooh. towards the wall. That's not clear. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication between Anthony Alfredo and his spotter. Tough break for Haley Deegan, though. Big damage to both cars. Haley's on pit road in front of Dave. And McReynolds goes across the strike to win the half of that second spencer davis will be third and it is tight from about the fourth spot on back uh fourth goes to riley hertz fifth to dylan bassett sixth to anthony alfredo seventh to colin garrett eight to chase cabre ninth to ronnie bassett and we should point out parker mentioned the weather it's been a little iffy all weekend oh. and now colin garrett gets loose in the 18. i don't know if he's got it yet parker oh yeah he's got an issue here most likely he's got a tire down oh he's gonna come into traffic Juan Manuel Gonzalez slams into him in the five car, and that brings out the first caution before they ever really get going. I know it's tough to do at this place. You're going about 140 miles an hour in the center of the corner, but right here, he gets it sideways. It might just be best to lock it down or, or keep it just as far down as you can, get in the throttle, but then he comes back up when it sits down in the left rear into traffic and nowhere to go for Juan Manuel Gonzalez. That's just an unfortunate circumstance there. And, you know, part of this monster mile is you have all this banking. You even have it on the straightaway, and it's self-cleaning yep. normally. So Gonzalez probably thought he was doing the right thing being on the outside. But when that car hooks right, there's nowhere for him to go. First start for Gonzalez here at the monster mile this morning. Actually, yesterday, uh, Garrett Smithley sat in that car. Be on the initial start after the green came out there. And, oh, oh gets into him. And Gillen oh. is around. Well... That is exactly what happens here at Dover when you're just a little too aggressive. You don't quite have to. So here he is on the bottom. You see he gets a little bit of the apron there. It unsettles the race car. But now he's chasing up the racetrack and being underneath Ruben Garcia Jr. Although he's not right on him and he's not right on that rear spoiler, it does disturb the air. It takes away some of the side force. It takes away some of the air from that rear spoiler. He doesn't quite have the arrow that he would have if he was alone. At this point, he's chasing it up, and then you see he does his best to keep it off of Ruben, which was nice of him, but in doing so, the car catches and puts him into the outside wall. Look at the rest of the field. I can't believe no.